In the previous video of this series, I looked at the four aces um, in, in the Book of Toth, and I made the point that, contrary to what you might think, the four aces are not part of the minor arcana, even though the ace is the first one, then you have the twos, then the threes, then the fours. The aces are spirit, akasha. They have no, they're the root of the powers of the elements. They have no, none of the element in them as such. Even though they have the symbols of the elements on them. So in one sense, it's those symbols are seeds of the elements that to come. They have not yet arrived. And I talked about this whole idea of there being a huge cosmological system that's associated with the Aces. Now, we're going to talk about the twos. And I'm doing the twos together because in Alistair Crowley's book of Toth, he writes about these cards in groups of four. It's an important concept he's doing. He's doing two different ways of looking at the same thing. Now, the twos are the four elements. Okay? You are actually going into the four elements. Now, it's important to understand that he's coming at this whole system of the four elements um, in a way that isn't covered by a weight more than anything else. And the interesting thing is that to go into the elements, this purity of the elements, you go into duality. The spirits are unity. Um, there is no division. There is no uh, differentiation. There is no bifurcation or separation of things. It is pure spirit. And within the four aces, you have this idea, all of them are essentially the same. So, but to go into duality with the twos, we, we enter into the differentiation and separation into the four elements. It's a very important distinction. Now, there are several ways of looking at the elements um, and the, the minor arcana with the twos. And the first thing to say is that there's the astrological way of looking at these things. So, when we have the four elements here, so the four twos here, We'll start with the uh, ace, uh, two of wands dominion, and the point is we have the ace, of the, the symbol Aries at the bottom, and the symbol of Mars at the top. So this is Mars ruling the first decanate of Aries. Aries is a cardinal symbol; it means the start of action. Okay, so this is this is the element of fire acting upon the fire itself in the sign. It's a very strong kind of initiating thing, and it happens at vernal equinox. So then the next one we'll do is two of cups, love, love. And we have this, in here we have, along the top, we have the symbol of Venus and the sign of Cancer. Okay, so, it's, so, it's, so this is very much the cardinal sign of Cancer starting off the uh, this period and of course this starts on the 21st 20, 21st of June which is the solstice okay then going into autumn we have the two of swords and now we have uh, Libra is at the top of that sword there and the moon is on the top of the ace so this is the moon ruling the first decan of Libra which is the autumn equinox. And then finally, we have the two aces. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there are two aces, aren't they? Change, the two of discs. And again, we have this thing of Jupiter ruling the first decanate of Capricorn in there. So I was talking in the first video about the aces and how they ruled the quadrants around the pole star through the princesses. And here we have the twos, the four twos, earth, air, fire, and water, 
on the cardinal points of the solstice and the equinoxes, the points where you shift things into a new dimension every three months. So this is a kind of reinforcement of this whole system. And if you looked on it from the top, you'd actually see a cross with the arms, which of course looks like the swastika. Not the swastika of the Nazis, but one that kind of represents this idea of the flow and spiraling of energy. It's creating vortexes like this that continue around the sun as it goes round. Okay. So this is a this is a dynamism of change, of manifestation. These things are coming out of nowhere from the aces, which is space into something and they do it in the modalities of the elements involved so let's go back to what he says about these things so the first thing is he the first thing he talks about is the whole concept of the tree of life again so we've gone from Kesa the crown the first the second point is hukma wisdom okay so this is where the so this is where he clarifies this point about you think it's the aces of the elements, but they're not, they're spirit. And it's actually the twos that are the spirit. And you think it's the aces, not the other way around. And he says, these cards refer to Hukma. From the point of view of the ordinary person, Hukma is really number one and not number two. Because in the tree of life, the Kata you can't see, Hukma is the first point of manifestation, and it's at that level of Bria, B R A, um, which is kind of like um, creation. There's a two points, two, two and the three. So the twos and the threes are at this level. It's the father and the mother. So the other thing about the twos, Hukma, is that this is the place of the knights, the father. Okay, so this is masculine energy. This punching in there. The knights of ones is very much this idea of power and starting something. So Hukuma is really number one and not number two because it is he is the first manifestation. Keta is completely concealed so that nobody knows anything about it at all. Hence this whole kind of idea of not knowing what the aces are. You can see how they've structured this in a really powerful way that you have to really kind of get all the different elements, elements to understand what's going on. Hence only on reaching the deuces does an element appear as the element itself, which is what I've been saying. Hukma is uncontaminated by any influence. Therefore, the elements here appear in their original harmonious condition. So, in a sense, when you talk about when you think of the aces as being the elements and the qualities they have, it's really found in the twos. So he's so then he goes through the um, the, the cards himself. So he has the two of wands, and he says the two of wands is called the Lord of Dominion and represents the energy fire, fire in its best and highest form, fire is controlling dominion. The two of cups, there's the two of cups, the two of cups is the Lord of Love, which performs a similar office for water. So now he's saying essentially that the fire element is about dominion. It's, it's, it's something that you have control of an area. And the two of cups is love. Um, this is nothing um, particularly um, controversial about this. Then we go into the two of swords, pe uh, peace. And it says the two of swords was, form was formerly called the Lord of Peace Restored. But this word restored is incorrect because there has been no disturbance. We can see that why that is the case. Because the twos are the purity of the element, so how can he restore it? Okay? It's an incorrect understanding that was going on within the Golden Dawn on this point. The Lord of Peace is therefore a better title. But it needs thinking hard to work this out since the sword is intensive act active. Now he's making a joke there because the thing about the thoughts and the swords and the mind is it's, it is intensely active. So the original state of the mind is peace. Is something that we've lost and it's something that we're trying to regain back into. So for most of us, air is thoughts and all stuff going on in the head, but really it's that calm kind of thing that should be there, which we've lost most of it. So then he says it may be helpful to understand, to study the essay on silence for a parallel, 
It's the negative form of the positive idea. And also the essay on chastity, which is in little essays towards truth. Which includes, Sir Knights, be vigilant, watch by your arms and renew your oath. For that day is, sinis is of sinister augury and deadly charged with danger, which you feel not to overflowing with gay deeds and bold and masterful of manful chastity. Um, I think the point here kind of is the knights come into this, uh, which as I said, they are also to do with the twos as well. So the knights in a uh, in the sense of people represent the purity of the elements, which might you might find surprising to hear. Then he comes back into this idea of, of Hippocrates, um, this idea of silence and chastity or isomers. Um, chastity is interesting, of course, because uh, the two of cups is about love. So there's the idea of this courtly kind of thing going on. So rather than seeing uh, the two of courts, uh, you have to see it in a kind of pure saintly sort of um, troubadour kind of way that's going on here, rather than a sexual context. Which he does kind of make a joke about. We'll leave that for now. Now, then he says, it, so he's done the wands, the cups, and the swords. And of course, when I, do you remember I said in the previous video about there only being three mother letters, fire, water, and air, and that earth was missing? So now we go on to the earth, okay, the two discs. And he says, the, this is all one case of the general proposition that some of the infinite energy of the universe is zero. Um, you have to balance equations, so zero has to come to it. This is why the whole thing about balance occurs in, in equations, um, mathematics. So now, he says, the two pentacles was of all time called the Lord of Harmonious Change. Now more, sim now more simile, change. Now this is this is an interesting thing here because he says the two of pentacles. Now when you actually go into the where he talks about the cards in detail, they be, they become the ace of discs. So really it's clearly he wrote these sections at a separate time. Um, so now the two of pentacles was of all time called the Lord of Harmonious Change. Now more simply change. And here the doctrine must be stated a little more clearly. This suit being of earth, there is a connection with the princesses, and therefore with the final hair of tetragrammaton, which comes back to this whole idea of the pole star connected the aces with the princesses. Earth is the throne of spirit. Having got to the bottom, one immediately comes out on again at the top. This is this is the idea that with a tree of lives because they had to sort of um, you have um, you have a string of tree of lives basically you have the spirit, you have fire, you have water, air and earth. And you also have this idea that when you reach Malkut at the bottom you actually connect straight back into Keta which is the one below it at the top. It's all a bit of a intellectualization, justification work around various things and stuff. But this idea of change that goes on. Hence the card manifests symbolism of the serpent of the endless bad and the, the serpent is the thing that goes round the pole star Draco as well there is another interesting thing about uh, change because change is the concept of death so when we die it's, it's a change in energies not a death okay so this idea is that the earth life is death um, so we kind of get into sort of Buddhist doctrines here, as, you know, the whole thing of death and change, and it's all just what's the point, all that kind of stuff. So we're all. The, so this is a way of. I hope it's giving you a kind of insight into the way of structuring and looking at the twos. The twos are, in essence, the first manifestation manifestation of the four elements not the aces.